So we want now to consider the topological structure on spaces of uh, differentiable mappings. And let us first define a suitable topology for such a space of differentiable mappings. And uh, so uh, the setting we will be working in now is um, we will always consider M and N to be many folds. And we endow the space of all C infinity functions from one manifold to the other with the initial topology with respect to this mapping phi. And what the mapping is doing, so we are sending a C infinity function from uh, M to N onto um, the family of all its iterated tangent mappings, right? So we saw yesterday we can form a tangent map and we can iterate the procedure. And uh, so these iterated tangent mappings, they are mappings from higher tangent bundles. So we, the TK of F is a mapping from the case tangent or case iterated tangent bundle of M taking values in the case iterated tangent bundle of M. So what is the meaning of this? Um, this family of case uh, tangent mappings collects a lots of ba uh, lots of baggage. So what one should think if I have this TK of um, um, this TK of um, function f, uh, so I'm writing down now a local formula. So in general, this formula will be wrong, uh, at least on a manifold. But in a chart domain, how this formula, uh, how this mapping looks like, is something like in local coordinates, you have first the f, then you have the df, then you get the second derivative of f, and so forth, up to the kth derivative of the f. This is not entirely true, actually, these iterated tangent mappings, uh, they collect a lot more copies than just, I mean, here we have just one copy of, uh, of the first derivative, just one copy of the second derivative, at least what the notation suggests. If you go through what you really mean by these iterated tangent mappings, you will see that, for example, the second derivative occurs a lot more often. So there are, there are a lot of components which are redundant in this uh, presentation with the case tangent mapping. However, um, we can define a topology using this uh, embedding phi here. Uh, and uh, so we... Um, pull back uh, the topology along the phi to our space of C infinity mappings. And this topology is called the, topo uh, the compact open C infinity topology. Um, when we think of what this compact open topology controls, so the compact open topology controls whether a uh, mapping converges uniformly on compact sets towards another um, Mapping. That's the role of what the compact open topo uh, topology does. And when you think of now, okay, what is the meaning of this, um, uh, of this uh, taking the initial topology with respect to uh, all these iterated tangent mappings where um, the iterated tangent mappings are uh, placed into spaces of continuous mappings uh, with the compact open topology. So what you can control in this compact open C infinity topology is compact, uh, so it's uniform convergence of the function and up to finitely many of its derivatives on a given compact set. So you can basically uh, basically say I want that the function and up to finitely many um, of its derivatives converge towards another function. Um, since we have here the Cartesian product, so the product topology, open um, open uh, uh, sets in the product topology are basically formed from finitely many open sets in, in the pieces of the product, right? So um, this is the difference to the box topology we saw earlier. And um, so, um, this compact open C infinity topology allows you to com uh, control up to finitely many uh, derivatives, but uh, in principle, once you uh, you don't need to settle for a given finite number, you can you can basically for every open neighborhood you can decide on a new uh, number of derivatives you want to be controlling in this topology. And um, so, if you recall that um, the compact open topology, I mean. 
with uniform convergence of a function on a compact set. This means that the resulting function is again uh, a continuous function. Um, if you, so then there's the added um, uh, information. If you have a, um, if you have a um, sequence of function which, con uh, which converges uniformly on uh, a compact set and every single one of their derivatives is also converging uniformly on the compact set, then there is, uh, then the limit function will also be, say, k times differentiable if k was the number of derivatives you, co uh, you um, controlled. And uh, so what this uh, heuristic argument, I mean, I didn't, uh, don't make it exact, what you can prove is that um, this um, topology or that convergence in this topology of uh, smooth functions always gives you a smooth function. So if uh, your target space is suitably complete, whatever this uh, means in this setting, then uh, also this function space topology will be complete in the way that uh, if you have a Cauchy sequence in this, uh, in this function space topology, the resulting limit function will be, again, a smooth function. Okay, but since for whatever we are doing, we don't really care about uh, completeness, we will not spell out the proof that uh, when you map into a complete space, the resulting function space topology is complete again. Okay, so let's um, go again to the um, let's go again to the um, blackboard, so to speak, and let's remark a few things. So let's um, so we have the list. Just to recall it, we have this mapping phi, which sends the infinity functions and then into this product M naught C T K M T K N. We send an F to T to the family of all the iterated tangent mappings. Okay. Um, so let us note the following. Um, T naught of F is by definition just this mapping F. So we get our first remark in this topology. Um, we get here, so phi is injective. Um, when phi uh, becomes a homeomorphism onto its image. So we actually identify the space of smooth mappings with a, top a topological subspace of the product of the right hand side. Another thing, and uh, there we are going again to the um, exercises, because you can uh, do this as an exercise. Uh, the Compact open the infinity topology is also the initial topology with respect to the mappings TK, which do the following. So we take C infinity MN take a function and map it to the continuous functions from uh, TKM to TKN. And what the mapping is doing should now be relatively straightforward. So it takes a mapping and sends it to TKF, so the iterated tangent. Uh, and so if we do this for all N, then this is a family which induces the same topology, or the compact home topology is the one. Uh, which is initial with respect to these tk. Okay, and so finally, we um, there's another nicer description of this when at least when let's say m is an open subset of uh, locally convex space E and n is an open subset of a locally convex space F. So uh, we have locally convex spaces. 
in uh, the compact open C infinity topology is initial with respect to uh, the maps dk c infinity from m n to c infinity m times e to the k n mm. Um, yes, it should be. It should be okay. Uh, ah, no, sorry. That's what I was thinking we, we should have. Uh, you. Uh, so n times you should have an f and so the target space what the mapping does so it sends f to the kth derivative of this mapping small f and again we have to go over all the natural numbers and zero okay Final observation, the uh, compact open, the infinity topology is finer than the compact open topology. Mm. When it is host off. So again, we don't have problems with the house of property here. Um, and if um, our manifold M is locally compact, then lemma B16 implies that the evaluation mapping from the C infinity functions from M to N times M Values in n, plus the evaluation mapping, since the point of the function to the evaluation is continuous. So we basically get already from this lemma v16 for free the continuity of an important map, the evaluation map now, for the somewhat smaller space of smooth functions. Okay, and now. Let's uh, go a little bit further. Let's prove that if we have uh, smooth mappings, then the push forward okay again, have lower star c infinity m n c infinity m o g goes to f composed with g and the pullback so h upper star on c infinity m n to c infinity l n s in the continuous case we said g to g composed with h are these mappings are continuous and okay how do we prove this uh, so since the compact open c infinity topology is initial with respect to the TK, um, it suffices to prove that uh, if we compose TK with the push forward um, or uh, uh, sorry, end with 
the pullback. Um, but those are continuous for all k in the natural numbers, including zero. However, we have the chain rule. And what does the chain rule give us? So this shows if we take the C infinity mappings, M to N, then have the push, for, push forward, so lower star, go into the C infinity mappings from M to O, then we take TK on both sides. So here we have the C, not the C infinity, here we have just the continuous mappings from the iterated tangent. Here we have the iterated tangents now for M and O. Then the mapping which fills in this diagram so that it's commutative is the following. So the, what's missing here, the chain rule just tells us that after applying TK, what we have to be pushing forward to get the same on the right-hand side, we have to be pushing forward with the iterated tangent map of the F. And downstairs here, we have the compact open topology. This is just of how these mappings are defined. So we, we said the TK are the mappings going from the C infinity space into a space of compact functions with a compact open topology. And here we see that this mapping is continuous. These mappings are continuous by uh, definition of the, uh, of the topology. So we see that TK composed with F star is the same as, let's take first TK and afterwards compose with TK of F star. And this is continuous. Um, hence we see that um, F lower star is continuous in the compact open C infinity topology. Okay, um, so this was the push forward and the pullback, we have a similar argument. So C infinity from M to N, we are going over here with the H, pull back to C infinity uh, L N T K okay then C T K N T K N here we go down with T K C infinity as well C infinity C of uh, T K L T K N was with the compact open topology and the mapping we should be pulling back here by the uh, chain rule is then just the pullback with the iterated tangent of H, the stars on the wrong side. Okay, and uh, again, so the pullback is continuous just by this small argument. Okay, and this is what we wanted to prove. So in principle, continuity of push forward and pullback in the compact open C infinity topology can be reduced using uh, the definition of the topology to the same statement, but for the compact open topology on the spaces of continuous functions between iterated tangent bundles. Um, okay. And another nice property which we get. Um, so let's consider the case where we are mapping into a locally convex space. Obviously, we want um, that the compact open C infinity topology turns the set C infinity from M with values in E into a locally convex space. Well, this is true. So let's uh, 
swiftly prove it. Um, and then, then it should be clear. So we see um, uh, by definition the phi from C infinity M E uh, into the product so we have TK M TK E is a compact open topology. K not identifies mm, C infinity M E with a vector subspace of the product on the right hand side. Actually, this, uh, since derivatives respect addition and scalar multiplication, uh, this is actually, so the phi is not only a topological embedding, but also a, uh, a vector space isomorphism onto its image. However, let's, uh, let's first uh, recall why this guy here even is a vector space. So what is the iterated tangent of uh, this um, locally convex space. So if you look at the iterated tangent of uh, the locally convex space, it's an exercise to see that this is can be identified actually as e to the 2 to the k. Right? So this is a bunch of copies. Um, of E, so this is again a locally convex space. And we have seen in uh, lemma B13 that thus C TK M TK E is with the compact open topology is a locally convex space. This was this somewhat involved argument where we identified the compact open topology with the topology of compact convergence. And now what we have is um, that C infinity M E uh, is uh, isomorphic as a topological vector space to a subspace of this product which is a locally convex space uh, and subspaces of locally convex spaces are again I mean vector subspaces of locally convex spaces are again locally convex spaces If you want, uh, one can also define explicitly what uh, the semi-norms are. Basically, the semi-norms take uh, a compact set, take the derivatives, and then take semi-norms on the target space, uh, and then compute uh, the value of or the supremum of uh, the, uh, the derivatives on this compact set with respect to the chosen semi-norms. But uh, already from the description, you see that uh, this family of semi-norms giving you the C-infinity topology is a, quite a huge family, and it's a bit tedious to write down. That's why we just use this proposition to uh, ensure that the C-infinity function with values in a, in a locally convex space are, again, a locally convex space. Okay, and this is indeed everything I wanted to say in our preliminary on the... Um, uh, on the topological structure of the C infinity functions. So um, we will use this as a basis to uh, construct or to, to prove the so-called exponential law, which was already mentioned before. And um, however, since this construction is quite involved, 
we uh, shall do this in the next next lecture